How worried are you about the combination of more humidity and higher temps on human health, especially in places that don't have access to air conditioning? Yeah, I think it's hugely worrying. And we're starting to realize that the thresholds are actually much lower because a lot of these things are theoretical. And when you read what, how the wet bulb temperatures de actually defined, you're imagining someone sitting in the dark, naked, doused in water with gale force winds on them. And that's not the situation. That is where the thermal sort of tolerance comes in. It's what level beyond where even that doesn't cool you off. That's sort of the wet bulb threshold. But in the real world, these effects will kick in much uh, sooner because people are working, people are outside. So I think a paper came out recently sh saying that, you know, even with two degrees of warming, we're going to start passing these thresholds in pretty significant parts of the world. From a geologic perspective, you also see physiological adaptations to warm. So you have these transient warming events, like this one of sort of offhandedly mentioned a few times, 56 million years ago, where horses in the interval of the warming, it takes about 200,000 years for this thing to play out. Horses get smaller briefly, and then they get back to their normal size because it's easier to dissipate heat if you're a smaller animal. If we make the planet really warm for 200,000 years, there probably will be a fossil record of animals adapting to that. In fact, I think fish are getting smaller as well. So it's possible we will re-evolve back into Homo florensis, the hobbit man. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> I mean, we can't imagine. I mean, the, I mean, we are doing a planetary experiment here in deep time, in real time. I mean, this is, right. it's great. You and I can be in a climate controlled environment with effectively a zoom cameras and lights and do this, but it's, it's really fricking profound it the is. time that we are alive. Yeah. I, yeah, I think I'm sort of motivated in part in my work to show people that climate change is almost like this cosmically important issue. It's not the acid rain, it's not methyl mercury, it's not, you know, it really is this thing that's geologically pretty profound and we don't know what's gonna happen, but we do know that when you go down these roads that things can go pretty wrong.